uh, going to surprise is something that the team's been doing since you know Coach Casey. Yep. Why did you want to continue that uh, tradition once you became head coach, and what do you what do you want to see this weekend? Uh, definitely love the event down there. You're playing at a great complex with uh, Royals and Rangers, and they do a great job hosting us. Uh, the city surprise, um, and both big league clubs. You know they're getting going too, so they got a lot going on. Um, but we enjoy that opportunity down there. I think everyone uh, up here loves traveling and getting in the sun a little bit, predicting uh, 70 degrees once we get down there. I know this last week was a bit chilly and, and wet, and I even heard there was some snow down south in Tucson, but uh, I think it's something that everyone looks forward to, and you know, we get an alumni event together and really practicing that road trip week one. Obviously, with the weather we've been having these last couple of weeks, if we were playing here at home this week, I'm sure everyone would be excited about that as well. But it's something that it's a tradition at, at this point, and um, playing some solid competition, getting it going, and facing somebody else for the first time, uh, especially doing it in the sun, noon games, which is nice too. Um, I think that players, coaches, fans, families, everyone's excited for it. We just talked to Elijah for the first time. Coach, how would you assess how he's fitting in and, and, and what he's going to bring to the team? Is the first time you got to talk to him? Yeah. He's a fun one. Um, I think something that I've talked to him about, just one-on-one, uh, -on -one, mm -hmm. it's fun to see how quickly he's adapting to a new environment. Uh, he's a Northwest guy. He wants to win. He, he built strong relationships with guys really quickly out here. Um, and playing, you know, up the middle, you know, that doesn't get taken lightly. It's about communicating and, you know, running the defense and uh, being able to stay positive, upbeat, and correct guys as well. So he's working on his craft, but also finding time to reach out to the other guys and get them going. Um, he's, 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 he's a fun human being to talk to outside of baseball, too, because of, you know, his faith and, and what he wants to do, uh, you know, in the long term, just being successful. He wants to win, he wants to get better. And every time that I've gone to him and challenged him on something, he's handled it really well. What was one of the challenges that comes to mind? Just, well, getting up to speed with all the guys, making sure that they know uh, you got their back. And, you know, overcoming little blips when something bad happens, being able to respond quick. As all of our guys, I'd say, you know, you're 18 to 22 year olds, one little thing can happen and you get stuck on it. But we got to be able to turn the page. So we do a lot of video with him and all the other guys after our practices, just watching body language, watching intent. Um, but easily anyone can see he's got the ability to really hit and he's got a good arm and he can run really well too. So um, the sooner you know we get him feeling like he belongs and he is you know, going to be a huge part of this, uh, not just now, but you know, forever, always be a part part of the Beaver family. I think that's really when you're going to see him open up and run the bases and uh, get on base and hit balls in the gap and just own whatever role comes his way this year. Um, I think just a steady process for helping him with any little thing. No different than a guy like Travis. Travis wants to get better. It doesn't matter, you know, if he's already one of the best hitters in the country, if not the best. A kid wants to be even better, and so he's always going to find ways to, to do that and challenge himself. Um, I think, and that rubs off on other guys as well. When you got a collection of guys like that, you just got to make sure they're not too hard on themselves, uh, that they're missing the next pitch, that, that next big opportunity. Um, and so it's just for us as coaches paying attention to those little things and, um, you know, when they're showing up to the yard, making sure that they're ready to go. And when they leave, that they're able to clear whatever happened, learn from it, and um, go get some more work in on their own. Coach, other than winning games this weekend, what are some things you're looking to see out of your squad? The re response to any hardship. Uh, I think that's a good indicator of how the rest of the season is going to go. It's like, how do these guys respond to hard times? We were on a Zoom earlier with the other coaches uh, when we were going to go play out in Arlington and listening to everyone, like there's teams that have, you know, really struggled the first couple of weeks and ended up in Omaha. There's teams that have dominated and not done anything. Uh, I think just continually being learners from each of these events, you can use it as motivation if you go out really well the first couple of weeks, use it down the road if you struggle. You can, if you struggle now, it's a great opportunity to bounce back and really prepare for conference play. Um, 
you know, we're going to pay attention to all those things that are valuable to us, quality at bats at the plate, um, being a good teammate in the dugout, showing up on time, developing in our pregame routines, um, as opposed to, you know, if we have strengths, we need to make sure we maintain those strengths. And if there's areas where we're struggling, we're going to continue to chop video up, send it out to the guys, um, meet before the games, you know, also enjoy that we get to hang out with one another. So be paying a lot of attention to guys, making sure that they're able to control their emotions uh, and go out and compete and be belief for themselves and for the guys around them. Have, have you settled on your rotation yet, and how are you slotting those guys for surprise? We've announced uh, the first two. Um, May's going to go game one, and Kamat's going to go game two. After that, I think we have a little bit of flexibility. We're still looking at uh, you know matchups and best time for those guys, but uh, we know for sure those guys are going to be going the first couple of games, and I assume you know here in the next 24, 48 hours, we'll have um, the next game slotted out. And they're on 85 limit, probably. It uh, depends on the guy. Um, uh, some of them are built up to 75, you know, 70, 75, uh, 80. But really, I'm just going to be looking at the body language as well and what stuff's coming out of their hand. Because easily you get in the competition and what kind of stressful innings are we looking at. Um, and having, you know, a full roster of guys down there is going to allow us to really spread it around and not push guys too hard early on. Uh, so I look at, you know, the first couple weeks is a great opportunity to get guys in the game. No doubt you're going to do everything you can to go out and win. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, you know, with the exception of you got to make sure that these guys are safe and they're building up over the course of the season. And this is where guys can get that experience. Uh, I've seen young guys go out and they come out after the inning and they think they threw 35 pitches. How many did you throw? 35. I go, 12. <laughs> but it feels like 35 yeah. in the moment. So looking at how they breathe, and I think us being at practice every day and paying attention to how they react, we're going to see uh, just by talking to them when they come off the field or how their uh, presence is on the mound, if they got more in the tank and if they're in a safe spot. But, you know, we had we had some guys get banged up at the end of last year with Kamats and um, Hunter. Mm -hmm. And so just paying attention to those kind of things. But both those guys look really good right now. What was the separator for Hayden to, to be the Friday guy? I mean, honestly, take a look at any of our guys and you feel comfortable, uh, especially with those ones we just mentioned, going out and doing it. Uh, Friday night is a, a unique moment. It's when there's high emotion, um, under the lights, you know, adrenaline going, and you got to have some serious attitude to you. And Aiden's got, you know, he's one of the most respectful people I've been around um, and fun. The guys love him in the clubhouse, uh, but he's also got electricity coming out of his arm and uh, to go out there you have to have you got to be a little different mm -hmm. to go out there and do it not saying that any of our other guys couldn't do it but uh, I think he's ready for that challenge to do it and set the tone for the weekend mm -hmm. uh, he has great tempo he's aggressive he's going to attack the guy with stuff that's moving all over the place so uh, as long as he's just you know staying over the plate it could be a really good start for us no different than in years past, you know, Kevin Abel, very different mentality, not afraid of anything. Um, cool. Sellers, you know, that guy is going to go out and be a one flat to the plate because he wants to deliver strikes and get guys out real quick. Uh, Aiden's got a good blend of that, though, where he doesn't get too emotional. And he's, I doubt we'll see him uh, chirping at anyone else other than himself and going and attacking bats. So he wants this opportunity and he wants to set the tone for the guys around him. Will Jaron be on one of those? Once you're undecided, will he be either three or four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with a lot of external pressure on Trent coming into this season, uh, we got to talk to him earlier. He seems pretty comfortable with it. Obviously, you know, he's been picked to be the Pac-12 freshman of the year. I um, just wanted to ask you guys if there's anything you guys are doing to kind of alleviate some of that pressure for him or, or help him through that. Nah, pressure is only what you put on yourself, and I think he's in control of that. He's having fun. Even from day one, he's running around and going 110 miles an hour. Um, wants to make every play, pushing the guys around him. If you look at him and watch him practice, it, you'd never know that he was a freshman. I mean, physically, he's in a great spot, too. He, he's put himself in uh, a position to succeed because he's worked his butt off, uh, you know, well before he even got here. He surrounds himself with great people. He, he's competitive, wants to win, and he's also very confident. He's accomplished a lot when he was in high school, and now he's looking forward to having that same opportunity here. So. He's got a howitzer, 
He's not afraid to pick the ball. He's made some phenomenal plays. He's played on dirt. He's played on turf. I, and I think the group he has around him, too, is going to take some of that maybe pressure that one would perceive could be a part of it. He's going to take it off of him because he knows he's he doesn't have to do it all on his own or anything. We're all doing this together. You know, obviously, he was a he was a big draft prospect, and we talked to him about that. Um, yeah. was, was there like an excitement around the staff when he foregoed the draft to, to come here? Or what, what was that like when you guys found out you were going to get him? Uh, honestly, any time a guy steps on campus, you're thrilled. But more than anything, when they're going through that process too, you just want to be there for them. When you're recruiting these guys, you know they're going to they're going to make the right decision. You want to be there to help out through the process. You don't want to feel like you're persuading them one way or another. You just want to be a truth teller to them. And um, it's amazing. Like it, it, it just reassures the amount of confidence that he has in himself, um, you know, what he believes and who he knows he is to sit there and say, you know, what? I, I know I'm, I'm a, I'm a first day guy. I know I'm a one, a one, one kind of guy and I'm going to work to be that, that person. And throughout the whole recruiting process, his character and his ability have, have put him in a spot that, of course, we want all those guys to be here and, and him to go through that. So before the draft, you try not to get too caught up in is the guy going to show up or not. But you have to think, you know, so you don't get left out to dry and not have enough guys here, or the right guys rolling through and the depth. And so, you know, you obviously assume, shoot, this guy's probably going to get picked up. He has the ability, but you just never know. Um, and so while he's not eligible until next year's draft, you know, it gives us a couple years to push him and, and help him be the guy that he really wants to be in the long term. Going back to this morning, there's a lot of big picture conversations, red show schedule, stuff like that. How much of that stuff was on your mind during the course of a, of a year? And how much you know, does this program and the stature of this program help in of have an influence in those conversations if you have those conversations even at all. Conversations with what again? Like just like it, it making change, like having an impact on schedules, red shirts, those sort of big some sort of big picture type things in, in college baseball. Oh well you know I've obviously I, I love I love it here and we all do and we love the sport and we want to make sure that you know that developing young young men to become you know elite in their communities at some like, point in their lives is important and being a family man is important and raising a family so for each of these like topics that come up I, reminding all of our guys that there there's no like there's no bad there's no hardship it is what it is and it's opportunity for us to get better um, and so if anything comes up conversations with guys on where they sit you know for the current moment and the season I have no problem having these conversations with guys or, uh, you know, what it looks like after the year. I think it, we get caught up worrying about the past or the future too much, and then we miss out on the present. So uh, it's if anyone were to, if we were to sit down and just have a specific conversation about after this year or anything like that, I'm excited. I think we have the right guys here, and we have the guy, right guys recruited. We have the right staff. We have the right fan base and boosters that are going to help us through all this athletic department and already putting together uh, a schedule for 25, 26, and who knows how all this stuff's gonna change, you know, tomorrow or a week or a year, five years from now. Um, all we can do is make sure that we're voicing our opinions and, uh, you know, putting our best foot forward, preparing it, and uh, I think we're doing that right now. We have the right advocates. This program's been too strong uh, for too long, and the institution of collegiate athletics and what it means for kids in that development phase of moving on past that. These, these three, four years that kids get in college are extremely important. They need great leadership. And there's a lot of things that people just don't know because they don't know yet. And so I think we, you know, those that have had experience and been around the game, I mean, I still talk with Coach Case all the time. I still talk with Dan Spencer all the time. And there's a, many other mentors out there, you know, I think it's just smart to have those kind of people in your life that uh, are truth tellers and pour into you and give you advice. Um, as we all want the same thing, we want this place to continue to flourish and we want uh, you know, collegiate sports and, and why, why do we coach? To love on other people and, and do what the big man upstairs gave us an opportunity to do.